Hi, my name is Rob Davis, and I'm the Director of Intercultural Programs in the Global Learning Hub in Global Affairs at UC Davis. This is a short reflection on culture and cultural domains. We're hoping that they will be tools that you can use for personal reflection and dialogue as you move through intercultural spaces. Of course, when we approach culture, the first question is, what is culture? And maybe you want to pause this video for a moment and just ask yourself, when you hear the word culture, what do you think of? What are the words or images that come to your mind? Well, here's a definition that we would propose that I think has some useful components. Culture is a fuzzy set of basic assumptions and values, orientations to life, beliefs, policies, procedures, and behavioral conventions that are shared by a group uh, and that influence, but do not determine each member's behavior and his or her interpretations of the meaning of other people's behavior. A couple important points here. It is a set of values, assumptions, orientations, um, so it, it's more than just the way a person dresses or the food they eat. It really is fundamental things about how we make meaning in the world shared by a group. So it could be a, a department, could be a, uh, a nation or a subgroup within a nation. Uh, it could be an organization, a business, uh, but it's shared by a group of people. Influences their behavior, and this is important. It, it, Culture does not, we're not automatons. It doesn't mean that we will uh, act in a certain way simply because we're in a culture. And that's important for avoiding issues of stereotyping. So it's gonna influence our behavior. Culture will influence our behavior. It helps us make meaning, but is not deterministic. Uh, there are some really useful analogies for thinking about culture. Uh, you've probably seen some of these. Culture is like uh, a pair of glasses. It's the lenses through which we view the world. Uh, we don't always even analyze the, the power of those lenses, but they do influence. We take those glasses off and try to put on other ones we won't see as well. Uh, uh, cultures like uh, the water in which we swim, um, it's so common to us that we don't even analyze it or think about it or give it much thought much of the time. And yet it's so influential in the way we approach the world. Cultures like an onion, there are layers to it. There are superficial things that indicate certain things about cultures, and then there are deeper layers that we must uh, peel it off and, and delve into if we want to understand a culture, including our own. And then culture is like an iceberg, similar concept. There's some things that are apparent about culture and some things that lie below the surface. So here is that iceberg. And obviously, in your own definition, some things that come to mind are those external things. We often think of food or, or literature, language, obviously, um, art. Um, those are the things that are the visual manifestations of cultures, but the things that really make up culture and really are important about that issue of making meaning are the things that lie below the surface. So our views on what is beauty, um, the relationships uh, in a family, power, who has it, how decisions are made, um, Religion is a, is a piece of it. Uh, our approach to time, which is very important in the work that we do. These are all things that we don't analyze, but that influence us because of the culture that we're part of. There are um, two ways of thinking about culture. And I think when we're sending students abroad or when we're going abroad, we often will approach cultural learning in culture specific ways. I'm going to country X. How do you greet people there? How do I act there? What should I avoid? What do I need to do? What, what are the foods there? Um, what do I need to do to avoid offending someone? That's culture specific knowledge and it has value, right? We want to make sure that we're honoring people in their places, but it doesn't get us very far if we want approaches that give us tools for thinking about culture more generally and moving within a variety of cultures at once. And so culture general knowledge, which is more about models or frameworks that can help us think about culture more broadly and more generally and compare our approaches to others in a more general sense are also useful. Two books that really help us delve into this culture general approach to thinking about culture are uh, these two, Culture and Organization Software, The Mind and the Culture Map. Both lay out uh, ways of thinking about dimensions or a framework for thinking about where cultures differ. And I recommend both of them to you. The Hofstede, Hofstede one uh, does a little bit more on the research behind culture. And here are some of these dimensions that they bring up. I don't have a lot of time to go into them. We can provide you with a handout with more a definition, individualism, collectivism is, is not just about me as a lone person in the world, but it's more about um, this, this dimension is more about how we um, view our allegiance. Is it to a small group or to a larger group? Power distance is all about egalitarianism. Do I believe that there is a legitimate distance between those who have authority and me, or do I think we should 
all be closer together, flat structure, if you will, if you're thinking organizationally. Uh, uncertainty avoidance, strong and weak, really does not have to do with risk avoidance as much as it has to do with the way we think about controlling our lives through the use of ritual. So strong uncertainty avoidance would have more ritual that is appealed to and used. Weak uncertainty, much more willing to innovate you know, within the daily life. Uh, one that you'll, uh, a dimension you'll see a lot is high versus low context communication because there's a lot of, of discussion on intercultural communication. Low context communication is one where, you know, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. My words communicate the majority of what I want to communicate. Whereas in a high context communication, body language and even silence are just as important to understanding the communication I'm trying to make to you as the words themselves. Time is another one that's very common. Here it's listed as linear versus flexible, but time is also about how we value time vis-a-vis -vis other things like relationships with people. So linear time might uh, value certain outcomes and a very step-by-step uh, -step approach to dealing with problem solving. Flexible time would be more uh, open. Decision-making is another one. Uh, do we believe uh, that consensual decision-making is important or do we permit and allow for top-down decision-making? Uh, communication, another communication one which is related to high and low context is the level of, of comfort we have with confrontational or non-confrontational approaches. And then finally, a, an important one, um, achievement focus versus nurturance focus. Are we driven to achieve ends? Is that what we believe is most important in human relationships? Or are we about making sure that no one is left behind? Real quick introduction, what I want to say about them is um, if you think of people in a population distributed, we're not sitting at one pole or the other. Uh, and that's, again, culture influences, but not, does not determine. If you take a distribution, yeah, one cultural group may be more heavily uh, distributed to one end, another to another, but and any individual within that group uh, could just as easily be more like the other group than their own in terms of their own proclivities and their own actions and how they personally make meaning. So um, we're thinking about culture because we want to develop our intercultural learning abilities. Uh, we want to advance in our ability to move in different cultural spaces. And this four phase approach really gets at what's important, I think, in terms of that, um, in, uh, that learning process. First, we want to approach culture to first and foremost to learn about ourselves. How do we make meaning? Can we define that? Or is it so blind to us uh, because it's the water we swim in that we can't even articulate it. And so we want to start cultural analysis by looking at ourselves, how we make meaning, and then obviously have the tools to understand how others make meaning and how that may differ. A third important step in a maturity process is engaging mindfully uh, in contexts that disorient us. You know, culture, cultural difference, uh, intercultural engagement in a lab, in a department, uh, in a project, uh, it, it can be disorienting. People do things that we don't understand. And so we want to use our own, our understanding of ourselves, one, our understandings of others, two, to engage mindfully, sort of, if you will, step back and ask what is going on without prejudging. And that's an important uh, step in a maturing process. And then the fourth step is, is then obviously actually bridging cultural gaps, understanding ways that we can um, bridge gaps so that we can meaningfully advance the goals of an organization or of a project, not just understand what's going on, but take steps not to stop doing things that are the way we think uh, are appropriate culturally, but to be cognizant and to bridge across so that we can work with other people who may approach it differently. And that may be as simple as being able to call it out and acknowledge the differences that exist. This is a four phase approach and critical to it is really um, developing some practices to prepare ourselves to experience and analyze difference. And, and this simple so-called DIE approach, describe, interpret, evaluate, is, is really a helpful one we can use in everyday life. You come up against a situation, being able to look at it without judging it. What do I see objectively? How many people are here? What, are, what do I see them doing? Not what do I interpret them to be doing or what I believe they're doing, but what is it just that I see? And then interpret, interpretation is important because it, it pushes us to think about alternatives, alternatives to why we're, what's happening and why that might be happening. Once we've done those two, then we can think about our emotional responses to it and whether those emotional responses are useful or not. Well, that's a real quick introduction to some general concepts about culture. 
here's my contact information. I would very much value the opportunity to engage these with you further. You can always reach out to me and we can discuss them more.